Welcome everyone to our virtual Christmas Eve service this year. Things are different and have been different for this entire year. But we are delighted to welcome you into this presence and to a special evening of worshiping our Lord and Savior. Christmas is not just a day, is it? It really is a season. We began to see Christmas displays in stores back around Halloween. And you might have had decorations out in your home since at least Thanksgiving. So it is a long season, and sometimes we grow weary of it. We become overwhelmed and even physically and emotionally exhausted by the time we get to Christmas Day. So this evening, I want to invite you to step back in time to that very first Christmas. I want you to remember that Jesus was born in a small town, a very plain town called Bethlehem, in a stable that was rugged and rustic and probably also smelly. And in that stable, the Lord Jesus Christ was presented to us. We are here to remember him. And in your mind, perhaps you can recall with your imagination the place where the little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head.
See this box? This is a gift for the whole family. You see, we are a Christmas decorations right after Thanksgiving dinner type of family. As soon as the stuffing is in the Tupperware, boom, we are setting out ornaments and lights. And truth be told, the lights stay out till mid-January at a minimum. Now, that may be because we just love the Christmas atmosphere and the Christmas spirit, or we're just lazy. I mean, we were devoted to the tradition of it, to the routine of it. I think in our hearts we just got lazy. We have this tradition where every Christmas we would all set up the nativity scene and we'd set it out diligently, routinely. It was almost as if we were just trying to get through that next hurdle so we could watch our Christmas movies. So I had this idea. That's right. I stole baby Jesus. I plucked him right out of there. I started doing this about four years ago. I wanted him to mean something when he was in the manger. Now I know what you're thinking. What? Why would a sane man hide the baby Jesus during Christmas? And I think therein lies the problem. A, I'm not that sane. And B, for me, Jesus was becoming just another ornament. And I just didn't want him to be that anymore. I wish you could have been there that very first year. <laughs> it was Bedlam. Where's baby Jesus? Who took him? <laughs> the mystery of baby Jesus' whereabouts was on the forefront of everyone's minds. And then before you know it, I started throwing out these little ransom notes. And then, People were, they were searching for clues. And, and every night at dinner table, they would come up with these new theories. In the kitchen. I think really? it's somewhere yeah. outside. I think he's somewhere in the living room. Yeah, but... For three weeks straight, our house was cloaked in conspiracy. I wonder where he is. Me too. Me three. Me four. I do it a now, I may not be the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree, but I do know, and I was raised to know, that the most important thing about Christmas is to seek Christ. And that's why I hide the baby Jesus. My kids, they've gotten so into this. Two years ago, they made shirts that said, uh, keep calm and find Jesus. And last year, last year they made a Facebook and they posted everything on it. <laughs> you wanna know where I hid baby Jesus this year? I hid him in our flower bed. Yep, gave him a little ransom note. Their last clue was this, Ephesians 5, 2. And walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The fragrant offering part kind of confused my little one. She kept trying to look for him in the bathroom. Anyway, it took them a while, but they finally found him. I still got it. So, I have to go back out and hide him again. Because we will not open this gift until Christmas Eve. And then on Christmas Eve, we'll turn off the phones and the TVs. And I'll just be quiet. He came into the world quietly, and I just want my family to absorb this. And then we will open up this gift, this amazing, God-breathed, prophecy-filled gift. And we will sit around as a family, and we will talk about why Jesus was the greatest Christmas gift ever. Infant, holy infant
time to light the candle at the Advent wreath. Come over with me, and you can come in close. This is perfect. We already have several candles lit. We have the prophet's candle, and the Joseph candle, and the Mary candle, and the shepherd's candle. And now we're going to light the Christ candle. This is the candle that represents the Lord Jesus, who was born at Christmas. And we're going to talk about Jesus for just a minute, because I actually have Jesus with me. I've got the baby Jesus in my arms. Isn't that amazing? And isn't he beautiful? What, what did you say? Th this isn't a real baby? Well, you're right. It's a doll. This is one of the dolls that my granddaughters like to play with when they come to visit Papa and Mimi at our house. So Addison and Isabel play with this doll and with others, and sometimes I play with them too. I've got grandsons, Micah and Caleb, and also Samuel, but they like to play with trucks and pound on things. So this is a doll baby that my granddaughters like to play with. But we can pretend that it's baby Jesus. Would it surprise you if I told you that baby Jesus was actually very, very old? Newborns don't look old, do they? They look very new. They're fresh, and they're cute, and they're precious, and we just enjoy them and love to hold them and squeeze them and kiss them because they're babies. But Jesus was actually very, very old. In fact, the prophecies about him in the Old Testament are really old. They promised a Messiah, or the Christ, the one that God would send to rescue us from sin. And when we read some of those Old Testament prophecies, we find out that Jesus actually was ancient. In fact, there's a man in the Old Testament named Daniel who said that one of the names for the promised Messiah would be the Ancient of Days. Do you know what ancient means? Sometimes your mommy or your daddy might open up the refrigerator and they pull something out of the refrigerator and they look at the expiration date and they say, oh my, this is ancient. And then they throw it away in the trash. Ancient means it's old. And if it's old in your refrigerator, it's not safe to eat. So you have to get rid of it. But Jesus was even more ancient than that. He was born in Bethlehem about 2,000 years ago. That makes him pretty old for us. But he was really present even at creation. Jesus is older than anything that is. He's as old as God because he was God in the flesh. Now, I know it's hard to look at a newborn and think of him as ancient. So let's just imagine, if we can, that this newborn is actually very, very old. Maybe if I put my glasses on baby Jesus, does that make him look older? Not really. I don't think glasses are going to do it. 
Even children sometimes wear glasses, and it doesn't make them look old. But what if I do this? What if I would put on baby Jesus' head some white hair? Does that make him look a little bit older? Hmm, maybe a little bit. What if I do this? What if I put on baby Jesus a long flowing beard? How about that? Does that make him look older? I know you're thinking, Pastor, you're being silly. Babies don't have white hair, and they don't have beards. Yeah, you're right. But he does look a bit more like me. Ancient. That's what I'm going for. Well, no, Jesus didn't have white hair, and he didn't have a beard. But when you look at Jesus in the manger, or when you hear the Christmas story, or when you think about Mary and Joseph taking care of that little baby in Bethlehem, I want you to remember that actually that baby was very, very old and sent from God to rescue us from sin. A tiny child, a little baby, looks helpless and weak, but in this baby was all the power that was necessary to save us from sin and to make our world a good place. And that's why we worship and we adore him.
entire Bible is the story of Jesus. From the first page to the last, we are introduced to him, our coming Savior, and then the one who did arrive in Bethlehem, who lived and who died and was raised again. And the story continues to say that he's going to come again. We're celebrating his first advent, but there will be another. He's coming back for those who are his. In the Old Testament, some of those passages include Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Another passage we find in the prophecy of Daniel, where Daniel writes, As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Then we come to the New Testament, and the story is fulfilled. That's what we're celebrating. One passage is found in Luke chapter 1. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end.
Did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the great features of a Christmas Eve service is the moment when we light our candles. I love that moment. I look forward to it every year. We take the light from the Christ candle that we lit earlier in the service, and then I pass it to someone else, and that person passes it to someone else, and soon the entire sanctuary is filled with light, the light of the world. Well, this is a little different this year. We're not doing an in-person service. But we are going to light candles, and I hope you have one at home because at some point during this sequence, whenever you're ready, you can light your candle to join us as we light ours. And as a matter of fact, we have many, many candles around the cross, and those candles represent our alliance, family, and friends. There's a candle for you. The Novak family is going to help me in lighting all of these candles, Bob and Karen and Allison and Kevin and Maxine will be lighting a candle around the cross for each of you, and you can light your candle as they light theirs. And we're going to be singing like we usually do, and by the time we complete this, the place will again be filled with light. So this is a very precious moment. We invite you to think about that holy night as we join together in lighting our candles.
service, I'm always reminded of that night when the shepherds were gathered on the hillsides watching their sheep and suddenly an angel appeared 
and the glory of the Lord shone around them, they were terrified. And then there were a host of angels. I can just imagine the night sky absolutely lit up, much more brilliant even than what we're seeing right now with all of these candles. And they were frightened, but they also were gladdened. They rushed to Bethlehem, where they saw exactly what the angel had told them, the Christ child in the manger. And they beheld him and then went away telling others about him, glorifying and praising God. And when we have received the light of the world, we also should go and tell others. On the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, oh, silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a our Christmas Eve service. God bless each of you. Good night and from all of us, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs>